Nigeria has recorded 304 more cases of the novel coronavirus, bringing its total infections to 44,433. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control disclosed this on Tuesday night. The new cases were reported in Lagos, the Federal Capital Territory, and 17 other states of the Federation. While the FCT topped the list with 90 infections, Lagos reported 59 cases. Other states with new cases include Ondo with 39, Taraba with 18, Rivers 17, Borno 15, Adamawa 12, or your 11 and Delta 9. States with fewer infections include Edo with 6, Bochi, Kwara, Ogun and Oshun each having four, four cases, Bayosa, Ple 2 and Niger each having three cases, Nasarawa 2 and then Kano 1. We are now joined by uh, medical practitioner Dr. Mark Boala to make sense of all of this uh, new development. Good to have you Dr. Boala. Thank you, Amaka. All right, so let's begin with the first uh, information there, that we noticed that Abuja is, got, is the highest now. It has topped the list. So are we going to see a situation where it looks like Lagos, which used to be the epicenter, is you know, reducing, and the more states are having more cases, other states are having more cases as a result? Yeah, sure, this is likely. Uh, but again, it's also possible that uh, the number of testing uh, are still not adequate. So um, it all depends on who presented um, that get tested. Mm -hmm. We're not doing any um, community testing randomly to, to see if these cases are going up or down. Um, I think also resources are not adequate for that. So definitely there will be these swings here and there. Mm -hmm. So it's most likely um, tied to the number of testing done. Right. But definitely some states um, will also have some increase in number if they're actually testing. Mm -hmm. Because right now, because of the ease of the lockdown, there are a lot of uh, situations. So many people are getting together than uh, before. Right. So definitely we're going to have uh, some cases. degree of surges here. Yeah. All right. So in talking about the treatment, you know, um, experts have said that the symptoms of, of COVID are also close to that of malaria. So a patient could uh, present with both sim symptoms. So in treating one, there's a possibility that you miss another. So you could be treating malaria, for instance, and miss out in the other. So how do uh, doctors and medical experts like you handle such situation? Well, um, there's some symptoms or signs that are similar, right, like you said. Um, however, uh, malaria diagnosis is not difficult, so it's something that can be done easily. And except if that uh, practitioner is only treating on symptom basis, that's when you don't know exactly what you're treating. But in um, evidence-based medicine, mm -hmm. you're supposed to carry out tests. So at least the easiest and the cheapest one that somebody can have done, even by the side lab, is malaria testing. So once the doctor rule out that, you'll be able to commence malaria treatment and watch each person that presents with symptoms that are similar to COVID is already a suspect. So he's supposed to handle it in that fashion to prevent uh, spread of the infection. So they have to wear their uh, protective gears and also advise the patient to take note and do a level of contact tracing at their own level capacity, how much they can do. Mm -hmm. And if the resources are available, or the doctor also noticed that, because in malaria treatment, once you've started day one, day two, you already start noticing some result. Right. So if, the, if, there's, if it's COVID, it's not likely to be that drama drastic, except if the person is, uh, have both malaria and asymptomatic for COVID, hmm. then it's tricky. But otherwise, the doctor will now quickly prompt uh, the CDC and get the test done. Okay. Now let's talk about you know uh, schools reopening and um, children or students having uh, to get back to school. I mean, we know that everyone is vulnerable to COVID-19, but particularly for the fact that students are going back to school, what are the measures that parents and authorities, of course, should put in place in order to you know keep their wards uh, still protected and safe? Yeah. Um this is definitely a tricky one, but like everyone have uh, ag almost agree now is that we need to ease down uh, to some extent and we can't continue keeping the um, people and also students indefinitely at home. But um, it's risky. Uh, it happened to be that from um, general uh, statistics around the world, children didn't present much like adults uh, because there are some um, existing morbidity that tend to make it more severe in adults, um, which are not likely to be present in children. So at this stage, that's the information we have. However, if the child is exposed, 
you know, children don't present with uh, symptoms, easy, complain easily like adults. So we need to be watchful for the kids to be able to identify. Even if it's a simple cold or malaria, sometimes it's only when it's almost overwhelming them before you realize that they're ill. Mm -hmm. So parents need to watch them. Again, it's possible that if they get infected, they may pass it on to adults. So there should be some degree of social distancing, especially to grannies and mm -hmm. grandpas. They have to be careful if they have existing uh, morbidity, such as uh, diabetes or heart problems. They need to be sure that uh, if they have people going to school and mixing with others, they need to find a way to create a level of social distancing or not visiting grandparents until when they are sure that they have isolated for some weeks, couple of weeks before they go. All right. Thank you so very much, Dr. Bala, for your time and do keep safe, as we say. Thank you.